Hello guys, what's up and welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Arc Studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create some these type of override super realistic renders in the SketchUp with Enscape. So I'm going to show you some examples in here that I use for my portfolio. So this project from zero to hero completely designed, rendered and modeled by Surush Mohamed Hassani, SketchUp Arc Studio founder. And I'm going to talk about how we can create these type of 3D realistic buildings in Enscape for SketchUp. So I have the SketchUp environment in here. And you can see the details very simple and easy. So I'm going to click on the Enscape environment in here. And first of all, I need to turn off the two-point perspective. So what will happen is that when you turn off the two-point perspective and change it to the one-point perspective, the story is completely changed and you can see the good perspective of your building and your project. So for the override rendering, you need to click on the visual setting and play with the styles, which white mode is the best style for the uh, override. We have polystyrol, but it's not really useful as a matter of fact. And you can see the details and changes in the polystyrol mode. So I prefer to use talk about white mode. I'm going to change it to the white mode. And with the outline, I can set up how my project will be shown in my render. If you want some type of hand sketch project, you can increase the outline. But be careful, sometimes it can be completely destroy your render. So some number about 12% is enough. And about the two-point perspective, I'm going to change it to the uh, two-point perspective. In the exposure, you can turn it off to the 50% or turn off the auto exposure. It completely depends on you, but I prefer to use auto exposure automatically. And if you increase exposure a little bit, you can see the changes in your job. If I change the white mode to the none mode, I can see the materials, textures, and all of the lights and details, very simple. But white mode is our target right now in this tutorial. So I'm going to play with the field of view and I'm going to reduce it to the 29 and you can see I zoom more on my project. If I change it to the 30 and press enter, you can see it will get far. So field of view, play with your camera, zoom and lens focusing. In the depth of field, if I increase the depth of field, you can see my environment will be get blur and the main building will become on our focusing area. So I prefer to use some number about 26. And if I want to know exactly in scape focusing on which place, I can play with the focal point. Look at the screen. When I play with the focal point, some shiny line move in my environment and it shows the distance between the camera lens and your project. So I'm going to set it out in some place like that. And I'm going to type it 22.63 meter. And depth of field is some number about 11. Rendering quality is good, but in the image bar, if I turn off the auto contrast, you can see some highlight burn is in your environment. So I prefer to use auto contrast because it can automatically change the lights, shadows and highlights very simple and easy. If I increase the saturation more than 100, I can see some blue sky in the background. So if you want some special blue color, you can increase the saturation and it will completely change it to some type of rendering. But be careful, sometimes 200% is really high value for your renders. So I prefer to control it in some number about 110 or 114%. If you want some warm render, you can hold it with the color temperature. Very simple and easy. So I prefer to use 6200 Kelvina or 6400 Kelvina. In the bloom option, I can play with the light focusing, but not really important in this case. In the atmosphere, you can play with the sun brightness and you can see the changes. If I change it to the zero, the sun power will completely shut down. And now we don't have any light source, but 
you can use some medium quality of your sun for example 66 and it can be really okay for your render look at these shadows in here if you want to manage your shadows shadow sharpness is the best tool for this action so if i increase it i have some more sharp shadows in my render so it's very simple work and very easy everything is done in the output i can change my resolution to some other resolutions but on the custom mode i can change it on the portrait so time for the rendering i'm going to close my visual setting click on the screenshot and save it on my desktop the name is not really important and i'm going to press save It takes a little bit time and after that render will be safe for us, very simple and easy. If this content useful for you, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. You can watch the uh, playlist about Enscape full pack, about rendering for SketchUp and I think it can be really useful for you. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video guys and goodbye.